Uh, good evening, everyone. Welcome to the meeting of the Board of Directors of the Denver Regional Council of Governments for Wednesday, December 21st, 2022. Thank you all for being here virtually. Uh, and uh, I just want to uh, mention uh, that we are going to put up a, uh, although it's virtual, uh, we still want to do the Pledge of Allegiance. And so we are going to put a, a, an American flag up on the screen and I ask the directors to stand as you are able to do so, unmute your microphones and, uh, and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance as soon as we see the flag. Uh, Melinda, is that uh, gonna be shared? Uh, yes, I believe we have Cam working on that right this moment. Thank you, Cam. There we go. Okay, I will start. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, under God indivisible, with liberty, liberty and justice, and justice for, all. for all. Thank you. Thank you. I realize I should have turned my camera off during that. It looked kind of goofy. Thank you. Uh, so I want to call, the, I did call the meeting to order. I, we want to do a roll call, but... I am aware of one new member who isn't really a new member. Larry Vidim from the town of Bennett has rejoined us as a as the director from the town of Bennett. So, welcome back, Larry. I, uh, Melinda, do we have any uh, round of applause? Uh, do, we, do we have any other new members or alternates here tonight? Uh, at this time, we do not. Excellent. Okay, let me go back to the agenda. Uh, uh, so, Melinda, can you proceed then with the roll call? Thank you. Yes, thank you so much, Mr. Chair. And obviously anyone that does, you know, come on, uh, if we haven't promoted you yet, uh, we I promise I will do a double check at the end of roll. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, Steve Odoricio of Adams County. Here. Jeff Baker of Arapahoe County. Present. Claire Levy of Boulder County. I am here. Austin Ward, City and County of Broomfield. I am here. Randy Wheelock of Clear Creek County. George Marlin of Clear Creek County. Nicholas Williams, City and County of Denver. Here. George Teal, Douglas County. Yes, ma'am. Tracy Kraft Tharp, Jefferson County. Oops, yes, here. <laughs> Thank you, Tracy. Uh, Lisa Smith, City of Arvada. Bob Pfeiffer, City of Arvada. Allison Coombs, City of Aurora. Mike Kaufman, City of Aurora. Larry Vidim, Town of Bennett. Sure. Welcome back, Larry. David Spellman, City of Blackhawk. Nicole Spear, City of Boulder. Present. Margo Ramsden, Town of Bomar. Jan Plowski, City of Brighton. Adam Cushing, City of Brighton. Deborah Mulvey, City of Castle Pines. Roger Hudson, City of Castle Pines. Jason, Jason Gray, Town of Castle Rock. Tim Deeds, Town of Castle Rock. Tammy Mowers, City of Centennial. Present. Cara Tanucci, uh, City of Central. Jeremy Fay, City of Central. Randy Wheel, City of Cherry Hills Village. Russell Stewart, City of Cherry Hills Village. Craig Hurst, Commerce City. Susan Noble, Commerce City. Catherine Whitman, City of Decono. Steve Conklin, City of Edgewater. Good evening. Othaniel Sierra, City of Inglewood. Cheryl Wink, City of Inglewood. Ari Harrison, Town of Erie. Sarah Laughlin, Town of Erie. Linda Montoya, City of Federal Heights. Sonia Jensen, City of Federal Heights. Don Cognac, Town of Firestone. David Whelan, Town of Firestone. Josie Cockrell, Town of Foxfield. Present. Oh, thank you. Lynette Kelsey, Town of Georgetown. Here. Rachel Binkley, City of Glendale. Brian Tushare, City of Glendale. Paul Hazeman, City of Goldman, Golden. Don Cameron, City of Golden. George Lance, City of Greenwood Village. 
Dave Kerber, City of Greenwood Village. Chuck Harmon, City of Idaho Springs. Here. Stephanie Walton, City of Lafayette. Brian Wong, City of Lafayette. Jeslyn Shrezai, City of Lakewood. Rich Olver, City of Lakewood. Here. Isaac Levy, Town of Larkspur. Stephen Barr, City of Littleton. Here. Jamie Jeffrey, Town of Lock Bowie. David Ott, Town of Lock Bowie. Winshaw, City of Lone Tree. Present. Joan Peck, City of Longmont. Ashley Stolzman, City of Louisville. Kyle Brown, City of Louisville. Holly Rogan, Town of Lyons. Her Greg, alternate. Oh, is that Greg uh, Edding? Yeah, I'm her alternate. Thank you so much for being here. Colleen Whitlow, Town of Mead. Present. Paul Sutton, Town of Morrison. Adam Way, Town of Morrison. Meredith Lighty, City of North Glen. Richard Kondo, City of North Glen. John Dyack, Town of Parker. Here. Sally Daigle, City of Sheridan. Neil Shaw, Town of Superior. Tim Howard, Town of Superior. Jessica Sandgren, City of Thornton. I'm here. Sarah Nermella, City of Westminster. Here. Bud Starker, City of Wheat Ridge. Rebecca White, uh, CDOT. Sally Chafee, CDOT. Brian Welch, RTD. All right, and with that, I'm gonna do a quick count and just make sure that we do have quorum. All right, and with that, Mr. Chair, we do have a quorum. Thank you, that's good news, uh, Melinda. I appreciate you all being here. Let me uh, solicit uh, as our next order of business, a motion to approve tonight's agenda. Would anybody be willing to make that motion? So moved. Okay, second. So that was George Teal. Yes, and sir. Who seconded that? Win. Win Shaw. Thank you. Uh, all in favor of approving tonight's agenda, signify by saying aye. 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 Are there any opposed? Please say no. Uh, I can't imagine there'd be an abstention. Uh, otherwise, you wouldn't be here. Uh, thank you. The next order, uh, the next item of business is report of the chair. I'll be just very brief. Number one, thank you all for being here. This was not going to be a regular meeting tonight, but an item mostly administrative internal to uh, our um, our HR operation uh, had to be done by the end of the year. So I really appreciate you all taking your time out from us. Uh, I have to start my Christmas shopping. No, I was going to start tonight, but I uh, appreciate you taking the time to be here and do this. It's very important. Uh, item of business. And I think a lot of you uh, in your own jurisdictions have probably uh, uh, considered this uh, particular action that we're looking at tonight. So thank you for being here. The other thing is I just want to, uh, I don't know how many folks here might pray, but I'm praying tonight for uh, many of our, for all of our uh, people who are trying to uh, survive on the streets. We have alternatives and we hope that uh, people in here in Denver and I hope that people in all of your jurisdictions avail themselves of the services over the next couple of days. We have opened up the Denver Coliseum in Denver for 24, uh, 24 hour sheltering. Uh, I almost said seven, it's gonna last through the uh, weather emergency. Uh, we have uh, thoughtfully uh, taken a step to have the Denver animal shelter there because a lot of folks who are living on the streets, uh, in spite of all of our programs and services that we would hope they would take advantage of. Uh, a lot of them don't because many shelters don't allow pets unless they are service animals. So we have the Denver Animal Shelter at the Coliseum ready to take care of any uh, animal companions for anyone who needs to come in from the cold but have to has to surrender their, their animal for the duration. They will take them down to the animal shelter. I was just there yesterday, uh, looking at the operation down there on Bayot at the Platte River. Uh, excellent staff there are well prepared to care for their animals. So I just pray that the folks who are uh, living on our streets are finally motivated to take up our services. And perhaps 
get connected with a caseworker and get on the ladder to some more stable housing services or whatever it is they need. Um, so that is my prayer tonight. And I hope that all of you who pray or otherwise are concerned with, uh, with our homelessness situation uh, will do likewise. And uh, I hope that we don't report any, any tragic uh, loss of life over the next couple of days. Uh, I think it underscores, Doug and the rest of the staff and directors, I think it underscores the importance of the housing and homelessness conversation that we are attempting to uh, facilitate uh, among partner agencies in the metro area. Um, on top of this, as you know, we have in Denver probably about 1,500 uh, migrants who have made their way to Denver uh, very unexpectedly, and it's it's putting a real uh, real pinch on our resources. Uh, this, the mayor put out a, a call this afternoon for employees to to uh, work the next couple of days, even overnight, uh, premium pay and bonuses, and we hope that uh, we have folks answer the call. So, with that said, we're in the holiday season. I want to wish Merry Christmas to everybody. Uh, Happy Hanukkah. Uh, Kwanzaa and whatever else, uh, whatever faith you have. Uh, I, I wish you a happy season. If you have no faith at all, I just hope you have a great uh, relaxing week next week. And we look forward to a lot of good things in the new year. Uh, that will, I think, be enough for my report. I've gone on long enough. Uh, thank you. Uh, next item is a report from the executive director, uh, Mr. Rex. Go ahead, Doug. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, very much, and good evening to everybody. And sir, sir thank you for your comments. This uh, it's going to be it's going to be a a crazy couple of nights for sure. And maybe I hope everybody is, is uh, taking care of themselves out there. Um, and I really am going to keep this brief. I, as I mentioned before, many of you got on. I, I have a tinge of guilt the fact that we're even having this meeting today tonight, as uh, especially when I said we weren't going to have one. Uh, but so I really, really do appreciate your attendance on this tonight because I know there's a lot going on during the holiday season. Um, I would once again, I, I wanted to thank the board for a wonderful conversation that we had at our board work session revolving around Dr. Cog's possible role in the housing conversation. Um, staff, we've met a couple times since and, and uh, you know, really, really done a, a deeper dive into the, the, uh, the comments that you all made and we're planning on bringing something back to you all at the January 18th meeting. Um, so really looking forward to that. Um, also, we are trying to get more engaged in the conversation that's occurring at the state capitol regarding housing and land use. Um, and we will, of course, keep, keep the board apprised of any developments in this space as we uh, head into the legislative session. So stay tuned on that. The last thing I wanted to mention real quick is uh, for, we mentioned this a couple months ago, our partnership with the Urban Land Institute Colorado, um, we've been doing this for a number of years now, is providing some financial support for uh, their uh, local uh, technical advisory uh, panels. And there were two of our communities that were uh, selected for the upcoming uh, 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 technical advisor, advisory panels. And they were the city of Brighton, uh, which will be assessing the Adams Crossing Urban Center location. Um, that, that, that location is home to, uh, I know uh, Commissioner Odoricio knows this well, is home to the Adams County Government Complex and that has long been envisioned as a mixed use walkable employment center connected to multimodal transportation. So this, the panel will, will have a look and provide some recommendations uh, to, to the city of Brighton in, in that respect. The other one is uh, through the city of Boulder Community Vitality Department, along with several other uh, local stakeholders. They, uh, they're seeking planning assistance on redeveloping an underused parking lot, um, which they refer to as the 14th Street parking lot in the University Hills Commercial District. And uh, so they're, I know they're excited to have the opportunity to, to convene this, uh, this TAP to get some recommendations on that property as well. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I also would like to wish everyone a continued safe and holiday season. And, and uh, here's to a better 2023. Bundle up, it's gonna, like I said, it's gonna be a crazy couple of days out there. So thank you all so very much again for being here and uh, looking forward to seeing you uh, next month. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Doug, certainly. I appreciate that. Uh, just uh, as a note, uh, we are conducting this meeting because it is a regular meeting. We're conducting it with our regular order. So we did insert a, a, a item in here for public comment, uh, as we should at every regular meeting. So uh, Jenny, uh, I'm sorry, Jenny, I was looking at your chat. Uh, Melinda, do we have anybody in the public attendees who wishes to address the board? We would offer them up to three minutes of uh, 
public comment. I see that there is one hand raised, but I don't know if that is a person who wants to make a comment. Uh, I see the exact same thing you do. Uh, obviously, they are labeled as Randall. So I will go ahead and allow them to speak at this time, and they should be uh, able to unmute. Oh, it is Randall. Randall Loeb. Hi. Go ahead, Randall. Good evening. Good evening. Um, uh, I am uh, going to be brief because I know you have other things to do tonight. Uh, but uh, I was at the me memorial which just took place at the city and county building of Denver. And we had uh, 270 people's names that we read. Uh, and as you know, it is bitter cold. Uh, the storm is approaching and I'm sure in your outlying areas, it's already begun um, to look like uh, the North Pole. I just wanna commiserate with you for having to deal with that in your areas. I was really impressed by what Kevin Pl Flynn said regarding uh, making sure that people are safe. And I always feel um, honored to be able to uh, partake of your meetings and I bless you. I hope the, near, the year ahead uh, is a safe and salutary one for each one of you and your families. Thank you, Randall. Uh, that's very much appreciated. And I, I like the fact that you come here regularly and give us uh, your uh, perspective, uh, your lived experience. Uh, thank you. Uh, are there any other folks in attendees who wish to offer comment? Melinda, do you see anybody? Uh, at this time, Mr. Chair, I do not. Okay, thank you. We'll move on then to the next item, which is uh, to approve the consent agenda, which consists, I think, as I went through the packet, only of the minutes from the last regular meeting. Could I have a motion to uh, approve the consent agenda? So moved. Uh, uh, Director Vidum, uh, uh, Director Maurer, are you seconding? Second. Excellent. Thank you. Um, let's call for the vote and Un unmute yourselves all in favor of approving the consent agenda. Please say aye. 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 Any opposed, please say no. Any uh, abstentions? Abstention, uh, Chair. Um, okay. uh, the council member or Commissioner Teal. Thank I you. was on vacation, abstaining. Okay. Well, thank you for noting that. Appreciate that very much. Uh, the let's see. Let me flip over to my other screen. <laughs> Got too many tabs open. Uh, the next item is uh, discussion on the family program, uh, which is the reason we are here tonight. Uh, Director Rex, I believe you're going to uh, introduce this and then kick it over to uh, Randy. Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you, sir, very much. Um, and and as the chair noted in his uh, in his in his chair report, um, many of you have all been through this. Uh, probably all of you all have been through this by by this point. Um, and I, what I really wanted to do, I just wanted to introduce our our, our, our human resources director, Randy Arnold. Um, those that are on performance and engagement committee will be familiar with Randy. We also have present tonight, uh, Melinda Culley, who is Dr. Cobb's uh, general counsel. Um, in case there are any questions specific to the bill that you would, you are, you are interested in. And certainly last but not least, Jenny Dock, our finance, our administration of finance director is also present in case you have any questions for her. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I'll just turn it over to you, Randy, and go ahead. Okay, Randy, before you start, uh, Director Teal, your hand is still up. Did you have uh, something to uh, uh, say at this point? Oh, okay, thank you. Uh, just, just checking on that. Go ahead, Randy. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Doug. Thank you, uh, uh, Director. Um, I wanted to, well, this came up as most of you, I don't want to bore you with the background on, on family and, and how we got to where we are, but the uh, uh, the Paid Family Leave Act was voted on two years ago and is, is going into effect, the tax portion of it is going into effect uh, January 1st of uh, next year, so in about uh, a week and a half. Um, we looked at our benefits that we are currently offering our short-term disability, which uh, and compared it to what the Family Act is going to uh, cover uh, effective in January of 24. And it really is, the primary difference between the two plans obviously is the family element of the paid leave that is included in the Family Act. We currently have a short-term disability plan and a long-term disability plan that 
Dr. Cog provides to all of our staff um, that they're eligible for the first of the month following hire. Um, and our short-term disability leave actually covers for up to 26 weeks, uh, which is uh, more than twice what the Family uh, Act is, uh, uh, will cover when it is fully uh, in effect. Um, but we do not cover the family portion for uh, coverage for individuals who are need time off to care for uh, a family member. Um, so that is the primary difference between the two plans. What we are proposing is that uh, we opt out of the employer portion of family and let our employees determine based on their individual circumstances uh, if the coverage is necessary for them. They would have the ability to opt in uh, beginning January 1st of 2024, and we would assist them in making payment and enrolling in the plan uh, and taking their payments via payroll deduction along with any other benefit that they would enroll in. Um, in that way, we would be able to maintain our current short-term disability coverage, which is actually better uh, in terms of the coverage for individuals who are actively employed. Um, and with that, I would open it up to any questions uh, folks may have about either of the two plans. Thank you. In the packet, uh, directors, there is a, a chart that uh, does a side-by-side -side comparison of family and Dr. Cog's offering. Uh, so uh, with that, let me go to uh, Director Levy. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Randy, thank you for that and the materials in the packet. Have, have you surveyed Dr. Cog employees about uh, their preferences uh, as to whether to opt into family or um, just go with their existing benefits? Uh, thank you for that question, Director Levy. We, we have not polled employees per se, but we did have, uh, I had a meeting with the Equity Action Committee that we have in place last week and uh, took questions and explained the difference and our thoughts and why we were making the recommendation that we are. Uh, additionally, we had a meeting on Monday this week that uh, we had roughly 60 employees who attended uh, so that we could explain, again, uh, review the two plans, uh, what our thought process was and why we're making uh, the recommendation that we are. Um, and uh, the feedback that we got is uh, that folks are happy to have the option to be able to opt in, uh, um, that we're not taking that away necessarily, but we did have some employees who, uh, based on their individual circumstances, really don't feel that the cover they would benefit from the coverage. Okay, thank you. And could, it, another question I would have um, is whether the opt-in option is available on an annual basis or is it a one-time opportunity to opt in or not? It's my understanding that uh, employees would actually have the ability to opt in at any time after January 1st of 2024, uh, based on uh, information that we've received from the state on that, that specific question. Thank you. Thanks for those answers. Thank you. Uh, Randy, could, uh, is it possible to get that uh, confirmed? Uh, you said it was your understanding. I just want to make sure that that is, in fact, the case. I don't know if... Uh, uh, we have Melinda Colley on here. Would, would she be able to speak to that? I believe that is the case. I think there are a few restrictions surrounding when you can opt in. I think what they're trying to avoid is a situation where someone gets in a situation where an individual, you know, knows that they're going to need um, the family coverage and then opts in right, right before it. But I, I mean, I do think that there are multiple options to opt in. Okay. Uh, I don't see any other questions. I have uh, at least one here. Uh, the uh, in the matrix uh, in the chart in the packet it says that uh, if a if a Dr. Cog employee were to opt into family, uh, that we would deduct the uh, 0.45 percent of pay uh, portion and, and remit that. Is there any uh, payment then the employer match due from Dr. Cog for those for that employee who might opt in? No. Okay. Thank you. No, and, and then just uh, to add on to that, that does not impact the uh, the 
benefits that the employee would uh, would get in the effect that they had a claim. Okay. Uh, I see in the chat, uh, Don Cameron has a question. Yeah, yes. uh, sorry. Okay, go yeah. ahead. Yeah, late breaking attendee from Golden. Sorry, it took me a while to get in. Um, oh, no problem, thank you. When I looked at the data on the chart, trying to do the side-by-side -side comparison, I did not think that Dr. Cog's program was as robust as family. You did say the duration is longer, but I believe that the payout was lower. I wonder if you could comment on the payout as well. And I guess I would express my concern that um, it doesn't sound like Dr. Cog is committed to bringing their benefit up to be commensurate um, and they're just gonna rely on family. And I wonder if that's the go-to plan or are you gonna reevaluate it in 2023 or 2024? Thank you. Randy? Um, sure. The, well, actually the weekly benefit maximum on our short-term disability is $1,200. Whereas the, the maximum benefit on family is, is capped at 1100. So the, the, the maximum eligible payout uh, is actually a little bit richer for uh, Dr. Cog, for our employees who have a claim for themselves. Um, in terms of the benefits, we, we look at our benefits every year. So this, this would be an additional benefit that we would be looking at. Um, I, I would note, however, that uh, employees who do opt into family are locked into the family coverage for three years. They cannot opt out once they opt in, and that's per state regulation. Uh, to clarify, Randy, they can they cannot opt out for three years. They can opt out after the three years. They are locked in for three years, and then it's my understanding. And Melinda, you may be able to to add more to this, but uh, it, it would appear the way. It it's written that they would have the option of opting out at that point. All right, thank you. Uh, Director Cameron, do you have other uh, follow-up to that at all? No, I guess I would just reiterate when we went through this in City of Golden, we really looked at it side by side and we were convinced by IRHR that um, our plan, including short-term disability was better. And then we did opt out. Um, from the employee portion, I guess I'm just not convinced um, that Dr. Coggs can justify opting out of the employee portion. Okay, you. thank you. Thank you for that. But before I go to the other directors, uh, uh, Executive Director Rex, did you want to respond or add to that last answer? Yes. Thank go you, ahead. sir, very much. Um, well, first of all, thank you for the question, Director Cameron. It, it you know, it it's something we're always pursuing to um, to improve the benefits that we offer our employees at Dr. Cog. And we made that commitment to staff when we had conversations with them throughout the last week related to this, that in, in particular on the caregiver side, um, it is something that we have a, a specific interest in, in uh, providing to our, to our staff. So um, we are going to actively pursue uh, that policy change and hopefully by um, uh, open enrollment next year that there's there's a package out there that makes sense for uh, for us to include um, as part of this. And also, I should also point out that whether Dr. Cog decides to opt out the employer portion of this or not, there is no damage to employees um, because they still have the option come uh, January 1st of 2024 to opt into uh, family. So there. Um, you know that we we considered all options when we looked at this. I think it was a really great exercise for us to look at our current benefits and compare those against family. And we do believe they they uh, they rate very favorably favorably towards those, especially from the employee's perspective. Um, but again, it's something we're going to continue to uh, to improve on and hopefully provide better options come uh, come next fall. Thank you, sir. Yeah, and thank you, Doug, because that is one of the key gaps, I think, in, in our offering right now, and the commitment to be looking for uh, a, a, a way to cover that uh, before the family benefits actually kick in in 2024, right? So nobody has that this coming year, except those cities that might already offer that, like Denver, we've, off, we've, uh, we've uh, uh, adopted our own uh, program now. Uh, but 
to have that commitment by the end of next year to at least uh, let's, I'm not, I'm not saying you're committed to putting it in place, but to finding it because that's one of the key gaps. Uh, caregiver leave is one of the important aspects of family that I believe uh, had people voting for it in the first place. So thank you. Uh, Director Baker. Thank you, Mr. Jeff, you're- I agree. And when I heard from Executive Director- I'm sorry, can you hear me? You're, you're freezing up just a little bit. I don't know if you want okay. to turn your video off. I'm sorry. I, I was just gonna say that uh, I've sent to, I've asked our HR folks to send to uh, Doug Rex and Randy Arnold uh, details about the caregiver program that Arapahoe County currently has in place. I think it's a great program that we offer, and I think it's something that's available to others. So I hope um, other, I would encourage other jurisdictions, if you already have a caregiver plan in your program, let share that information with, with uh, Doug Rex and sure. maybe even with Chair Flynn. Thank you. Uh, Director Sandrin, you're up, go ahead. Thank you. I just was looking at this chart as well, and, and we went through this um, just a couple weeks ago in our council. It's kind of hard to tell where the different, I mean, I'm reading it side by side, but they're not exactly apples to apples. Is there a way just to, to highlight even, so for eligibility, for instance, um, it's an hours based on working hours versus the 2,500. Is there anyone working less than 30 hours or that wouldn't meet the 25? Like, how is that compared? How do you compare those two? And Randy, can you respond to that? Um, currently, we only have one employee who works less than uh, 30 hours per week. So uh, all of our other employees are full time. So that is uh, all of our employees would be eligible with the exception of the one. And would that one then have been eligible with the 2,500 in wages within the last four calendar quarters? I would actually need to pull that off of my, the top of my head doing math. I would think that they probably would be, yes. Okay. I, I, I think I'm just having trouble trying to compare where the differences are. I mean, even the next category, weekly benefit, it starts off with 90% of the state average and then over here, it's 60% of before. I mean, it's, it's hard to understand what that means. I'm not sure I'm in a position that I could make a decision based on this right now. Okay. Any response, Randy? Okay. Thank you, uh, Director Sangren. It, it truly is a, what I've been saying is it's not really an apples and oranges comparison. It's sort of a Macintosh apple versus a, uh, uh, Granny Smith apple, they're, they're the same thing, but the wording is different. And it, it's really uh, two different ways of, of calculating what the, uh, what the actual benefit would be. Okay, thank you. Uh, anything further, Director Sandrin? No, I mean, I, I understand it's not the okay. same. It's just hard to understand where the benefit would be if you opted out versus stayed in. Sure. All right, thank you. Uh, Director Levy, go ahead. Yeah, thank you. And thank you for letting me to take a second bite at the apple since we're oh, using sure. apple. Well, just, you know, we in Boulder County already made this decision to opt out. And one of the reasons we did was because there's no cost to our employees versus family, which does have a cost. But we felt confident that our benefit package um, really was, was favorably competitive to what employees could get under family. And I, the, the one part of this thing that I'm not sure this chart helps me um, understand is the weekly benefit in that the family, if I'm reading this correctly, caps, regardless of what your wage is, it caps your weekly benefit at $1,100 per week. And Dr. Cog's benefit is 60% of before tax weekly earnings to a maximum of 1200. Um, and it's that the way this is portrayed, um, I guess I, what, I, what I can't figure out from the way this is portrayed is whether 
on balance, Dr. Cog employees end up with a better um, a, a better compensation uh, under existing benefits. So that's that's the answer I, I guess I'm looking for. Okay. Randy. The, the calculation there is the state does have uh, on the website, the family website, you can plug in salaries and it will calculate, it will tell you exactly what your benefit would be based on your, uh, your specific income. Uh, additionally, it, it calculates the premium as well as the, uh, what your annual premium would be. So your weekly premium and your annual premium based on your, your salary. Um, the, the calculation that is, is on the spreadsheet is actually what is put out by the state and, and how they're doing the calculations. So it is based on uh, the average weekly wage for the entire state uh, goes into the calculation and then you, your salary is against that. And that, that calculation is where the determination is on what your payment would be. Obviously, that's going to fluctuate from year to year as well. But so, just uh, Randy, if I if I could make sure I understand this, for Dr. Cog's benefits, it's capped at twelve hundred per week. So, okay, that I mean that would appear to me to be more favorable than what what families offering. Yes. Okay. All right. And I would say, I believe my understanding is that the benefit under family, it's anywhere between 37% and 90% of your salary, depending on how much you make. Um, you know, the, the less you make, the higher percentage you'll get back up to that $1,100. So potentially um, for the higher earners, there would be a, a lower percentage of the salary that they would receive under family versus Dr. Cog's benefits. Yeah, because of that cap. So, yeah, Great. okay. Thank you. Thank you, Director Levy. Uh, Director Teal, go ahead. Thank you, Chair. One of the questions, um, well, much like my colleague from Boulder, uh, we did the same, had the same discussion in Douglas County. And um, one of the reason to opt out actually came from um, our employees because they had the, the, it was their perception, they sold it to us that. Um, the, the family plan, were we to opt in um, as the, uh, it, to the employer plan would mandate these payroll deductions. You know, of course, with an organization match from the county and uh, by opting out, uh, it eliminated that payroll deduction because um, our, our coverage is very similar to uh, what we see here at Dr. Kaga, just a few changes. And, and so I guess I'm asking for clarity from the perspective of the employee in terms of it, were we to decide to be an employ, employer to the employer plan, uh, contrary to staff recommendation, then every employee at Dr. Cog would have that payroll deduction. There would then be the cost for Cog to do the employer match, even though we have the benefits package as detailed on the right-hand column in place. So did I get that right or was I clear enough? Yes. That, that is correct. We would have, if, if we opt, if we choose not to opt out, then the tax and the premium would be effective January 1st of 2023. So uh, literally um, it, it, would, it would hit on the first paycheck, which is January 5th that we have. Um, again, we would be looking at uh, Every employee would be would be subject to that, and the actual coverage would not begin until January first of twenty twenty four. Um, and we already have the short term disability and the long term disability that that Dr. Cog is providing employees at no cost to them. So so that is really um, 
that's what we were looking at when we part a major part of why we made the recommendation that we did. Okay, so then still focusing on the impact to our employees on their paychecks, were we to opt out tonight per staff recommendation, um, staff would still get the benefits package as detailed in comparison on the right hand column. They would not get the payroll deduction unless they individually opted in for the payroll deduction that would have Dr. Cog's match as the employer. And that would kick in in January, but the benefits would not actually begin until 2024. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, again, this is very similar to the work that we had done uh, in the county. And quite frankly, um, you know, um, I, I'll just, if, if it pleases the chair, I'll just take a moment. We too made the decision to opt out as, as a county in large part because we did hear from our employees that they did, they did not want the payroll deduction in addition to what was already being uh, provided by the county as a part of their normal compensation and benefits package. So I'll just share with the board that that's the decision that we made. And it largely focused on the questions I asked of what is that impact to the employee's paycheck and, um, and what is that payroll impact? So Mr. Chair, sharing that with the board. Thank you. Thank you. And just to clarify, so I'm, I'm clear, uh, Randy, uh, if a Dr. Coggin, if we if we were to pass this and opt out, and if an employee opted in in during 2023 and started paying premiums, they would still be eligible before 2024. They would still be eligible under the benefits that we offer to the other employees. Correct? They wouldn't be ineligible for what we offer because they're no. part of family. No, and they, they actually, they cannot opt in individually until January of 2024. Okay, so, good. Yeah, and what we would be doing and what we told employees is that, you know, in addition to looking, if there's any, gonna be anything else available that we might wanna roll out, um, if we do not find anything else, then we would make this option available and we would make it part of our annual enrollment right. uh, process that we go through every year in the month of November. So right. that way we're putting it in front of employees again, uh, reminding them that this is an option that they have uh, and go through the educational process that we do like with every other benefit that we offer. That's good, thank you. Uh, Director Ward, go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Um, quick question on, do you know if employees could, I guess more or less double dip. So if they had to put out a claim and they were using both family as well as um, short-term disability, could they get both simultaneously or do they have to run through either family first or employer first before the opposite takes effect? I can answer the, uh, our, in the, the plan that we offer, any benefit is reduced by any income that the individual uh, claimant would have during the claim. So that would need to be disclosed as well. Um, in terms of the family side, I can't really address that because I've not seen other than how they calculate the, uh, what the, the benefit amount would be. Um, but in general, I can say that most short-term disability plans do have uh, they want to know what your total income is. Melinda, and Randy, I can address what family says. It does um, include a, a similar prohibition against double dipping. Um, family is the benefit you'd receive under family is reduced by any other sort of benefit um, that you receive from your employer. So, okay, thank you for that. Um, I guess my next, I don't know, question is uh, it was I kind of briefly mentioned earlier that employees who are more on the higher pay range would probably not get the same benefit as those who are on a lower pay scale, uh, just because of how, for family, just because of how the state has set up the math um, for reimbursement. How many of our employees at Dr. Cog um, tend to be more towards the minimum wage, that area of um, 
earnings versus higher earned? Um, what I can say is the average weekly wage that the state is reporting out here, we would, most of our employees would be well above that. Okay. Um, I guess the only thing I would have to say is like this, uh, like Boulder County and Douglas County, the city and county of Broomfield did opt out, but we are revisiting whether or not to opt in um, a year from now. Uh, we wanted to see how the state, you get a little more information from the state as how the program works and how it's going to be administered. Not to mention, since benefits don't take effect until 2024, we didn't see the point in uh, deducing wages or taking wages away from our employees when they don't receive a direct benefit as of yet. Um, and I think if we were to opt in, my opinion is that I think the full cost should be borne by Dr. Cog and not have uh, the employee contribute that 0.45%. Uh, other than that, I don't really have anything else. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, Director Olver, go ahead. Hey, thank you. Uh, I think I'm seeing a trend here. Uh, could I ask everybody, did anybody not opt out? And is anybody on this Zoom call, has their government not opted out? That's a great question. Uh, let me take the liberty of asking if any uh, member here represents a jurisdiction that did not opt out. Could you raise your hand? Interesting result, Dr. Carol. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Thank yeah. you. Oh, okay. That was it. Excellent <laughs> question. Thank you. Director Sandrin. Go ahead. I put my hand down so I wouldn't be counted in that category with him, but um, I, okay. yeah, I think this is a good conversation and I forget that it doesn't go into effect until 2024. Do you know if in 2024, if, if people were to choose to opt in, does it then take another year to go into effect for them or it goes into effect right away? It would go into effect immediately. Okay. I, I'm comfortable with enough information now after all of this discussion to make a decision. So Thank I'd you. be happy to make a motion if we're ready. Uh, yeah, I think we are. Uh, go ahead and make the motion first. I think the uh, suggested motion is in the packet. That I gotta scrolls. find the packet, yeah. And it's Unless on page, it. uh, page 12 of the packet at the top. Uh, okay, I'd like to make a motion to adopt a resolution declaring Dr. Cog's decision to decline employer participation in the Colorado Paid Family and Medical Leave Insurance Family Program, and I move for its approval. Thank you. May I have a second? I, I would like to second that motion, if I could. Thank you. Thank you, Director Levy. Certainly. I see other hands up. I guess they were going to also second it, uh, and they're all down now. Uh, some, uh, for the purposes of further discussion, Director Cameron put in... Uh, uh, in the chat, a, a suggestion that uh, that we talk about modifying the motion to include the commitment to a commitment to report to the board on the caregiver coverage before Q4 uh, of this year of next year rather, uh, and potentially an alternative before employees need to make a three year commitment. Uh, I, so I, I don't know, Director Cameron, if you want to expand on that or or not. That's pretty clear. Respond whether he'd have a problem with that motion. I'm sorry, I might be unstable. Um, okay. Um, I don't need to expand it. I wonder if Rex could comment on the motion. Okay. I think what I would like to suggest, just to, to for the purpose of discussion, is that uh, including it in this motion, opting out of family, might not be the best place to include something that sort of muddies the water as far as uh, opting out through some sort of official clean process to not to not put any conditions in there uh, like what would happen if they did not report to the board would that invalidate our opting out that might be a melinda colleague question but doug do you want to weigh in on that no i agree 100 percent, mr chairman um yeah i'd rather keep this this uh, this motion as clean as possible um i'm looking at right at melinda Cully in case she she feels differently but i think cleaner is better when it comes to this type of thing 
Uh, Melinda Kelly, you are nodding your head yes. Does that mean you do see it differently or you do not? Oh, no, <laughs> I'd agree. Uh, to the extent we can keep this motion clean, I think that'd be great. But certainly afterwards, um, if you've got a motion to direct staff to, to bring that back, um, um, we can you could certainly make that motion after the, the other action sure. item. Yeah, Director Cameron, that was actually going to be my intent was to to then after after we vote on this, assuming it passes, uh, then we would uh, I would solicit another motion to direct the staff to report back to us, uh, say at the end of Q3, uh, right before open enrollment starts, as to uh, what those alternatives are. Uh, would that uh, would that be uh, satisfactory to you? Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Uh, other discussion on the uh, motion. Seconded on the and voted on. That's the way it goes too. Yep. I'm um, sorry okay. if my. Okay. Uh, uh, direct... I'm uh, sorry, director. Yeah, that would be fine. That would be Excellent. fine. Excellent. Thank you, uh, Director Spear. Discussion on the motion. I just had a quick request. My computer crashed, and I had to log back in. Could someone please let me know what the motion is that's on the table? Oh, certainly. Um, uh, Melinda, could you put the uh, motion back on the screen? This is this is the motion that would uh, direct the, that would establish that Dr. Cog is uh, declaring our decision to decline the employer participation in family in the family program. Okay, thank we, you. So it's just what what was in the um, a memo. It's not. It hasn't changed at all. Correct. Were you here for thank all you. of the discussion on the that we I had? Caught yeah, I caught most of the discussion and about six minutes ago, my my computer crashed. <laughs> so okay. back now. Thank you. This Thank is helpful. you. Certainly. Uh, is there any other discussion on the motion? Director Teal. Thank you, Chair. I speak in favor of the motion. I mean, um, all of our constituencies, uh, all of our constituents jurisdictions uh, have made the decision, at least uh, per the chair's poll of the board. Um, it does appear that we had a favorable uh, report. Um, the report from staff was that there was favorable, um, uh, you know, the 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 employees favor right. opting out, and so I mean, it, it just kind of seems like everything's going in one direction, and uh, and then of course uh, we have a suggestion to. Um, you know, revisit additional coverage from our colleague in Golden. So, speak in mm -hmm. favor of the motion. Great. Uh, any other discussion? If there is none, I'll call for the vote. I don't see any hands raised, so let me call for the vote. All in favor of the motion on the floor to uh, declare Dr. Cog's decision to uh, not participate in family, uh, please signify by saying aye. 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 <laughs> I like that. I like that director over. Uh, any, uh, all those opposed, please say no. Hearing none, are there any abstentions? Hearing none, it seems that the motion has passed unanimously. Uh, if that is not the case, uh, please put something in the chat if you were, if you couldn't unmute or, or have, uh, or wanted to vote otherwise. Uh, let me uh, then follow up on Director Cameron's suggestion. Uh, Director, would uh, would you like to make a motion, Director Cameron? Yeah, I hope you can hear me. I've got my video off. I would like to make yes, a motion can. that by the end of third quarter before open enrollment, that Dr. Cog staff return to the board with uh, a discussion of the caregiver coverage um, that they may offer. Um, and that's it. Great. Is there a second to that? Director Maurer? Um, second. And also, could I just make a comment to this? Yes, please. Um, and, you know, I think this is this would be a beneficial discussion for a lot of our cities and counties. Yep. So, yeah, whatever we learn, I'd hope we can share it. You are correct. And it was suggested before that uh, any jurisdictions that currently do offer a caregiver leave share the parameters of the of their programs with uh, Dr. Cog staff with Randy, and with Doug, please do so. Uh, all right. Uh, is there any other comment on the motion on the floor, which is uh, asking or directing staff to come back to us uh, by the end of the Q3 uh, sooner, if you have resolution to it, of course, uh, with the report on the uh, uh, potential for providing caregiver coverage. 
uh, to our employees. Seeing no other comments, uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 If there are any opposed, please say nay or no. I'm hearing, I never knew what the difference was between nay or no. Uh, any abstentions? Hearing none, uh, I declare that that has passed unanimously as well. If anybody uh, meant to vote otherwise, please put that in the chat. Uh, if, if you couldn't unmute or, or otherwise. Uh, okay, uh, as this is a uh, regular meeting, I wanted to resume with the regular order. And the next item is uh, for committee reports. Do we have a report from the stack, uh, Director Williams? Yes, we do. Let me pull it up here real quick. Apologies. All right. So the stack met on uh, December 1st. Uh, number of information items. First up was a communication office update. Uh, this was just an update on some of the new communication initiatives and some of the existing ones, including uh, CoTrip.org and 511 map that uh, launched last year. We received a update on uh, state demographics from the, uh, the state demographer, Cindy DeGroen, uh, on there. Always very interesting. Uh, CDOT budget update, um, uh, uh, some redistribution in there based on some federal uh, changes here recently. Pretty detailed. I'd encourage you to check out the agenda if you want to get into the details uh, of that. Uh, kind of the main um, item for the meeting was an update on the transportation alternatives program. Uh, so this is a federal program uh, for implementation of non-motorized transportation products, projects. Um, portion of these funds are suballocated through the MPOs, including us, Dr. Cog. Uh, presentation included some changes in scoring. It'll be a more centralized scoring coming out of CDOT headquarters uh, in there. Um, see what else uh, there will be 42.6 million available for fiscal years 24 through 26 with a minimum request of 50,000 and a 20% non-federal match uh, and let's see I think these will be coming out in January uh, on that so that's it for stack happy to answer any questions thank you are there any questions for director Williams no seeing none uh, next up is Metro Mayor's caucus Mayor Starker is not here is there another mayor present who can uh, report on Metro Mayor's Caucus? If not, uh, we can move on to uh, Director Baker for Metro Area County Commissioners. And I may be able to give some insight into a uh, combined meeting that Metro Mayor's Caucus and MAC had on December the 1st, in which we broke out into um, area regions um, with MDHI, the Metro Denver Housing Initiative, and the Built for Zero Community Leaders to um, have a fact-finding and a sharing of efforts towards um, meeting our housing needs that was um, met with some folks thought that was a great way to do it and uh, other folks didn't get as much out of it as we had hoped but that just went to show that there are many communities housing initiatives than uh, other communities so i think the folks um, i can speak for rapo counties with our um, 13 communities found it very helpful to hear what everyone else is doing and to get the input from MDHI and the Built for Zero advisors. So that was uh, done. And then, of course, we had our social um, meeting just the other night downtown at the Grant Humphreys mansion. And that, again, was a combined Metro Mayor's Caucus and uh, metro area county commissioners meeting that I I wasn't able to attend, but I understand it was enjoyed by all. I think the other thing is everyone has agreed that um, uh, Commissioner Steve Odoricio's sweater is the best. Thank you. Oh my God, you're kidding. I, I was going to actually solicit a motion for censure for the fact that he was wearing it. Holy cow. <laughs> Steve, are you still here? I, I I would vote for censure. I I, don't <laughs> I would second that motion. 
<laughs> uh, the title order. I'm sorry. We didn't notice that within 48 hours. All right. Uh, next up would be uh, AAA, uh, but there is no report uh, and Jayla isn't here. Uh, so it's fortunate there is no report. Uh, report from the uh, Regional Air Quality Council, uh, Director Rex. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, very much. A uh, couple items of note, uh, discussion at the at the RAC meeting. Uh, we approved the 2023 budget and work program, and uh, we had a long conversation about the state's consideration of the ozone state implementation plan. As many of you have uh, probably uh, know, well, you probably know or read, um, there were certain elements of the of the SIP, uh, particularly in the oil and gas sector, which there were some miscalculations, and as a result of right. that. Um, there was a, a recommendation from the state to withhold chapters three, four, five, and 11 of the severe ozone SIP. Um, and uh, so uh, there was an agreement with that through RAC, but also uh, RAC provided some additional guidance to uh, Mike Silverstein, the, the executive director of RAC, to um, include uh, some specific uh, language or suggestion that we include reformulated gas in the uh, weight of evidence section of chapter five when that's re, re when it's resubmitted revised um, and in case you don't know the air quality control commission um, approved th those various uh, chapters of the sip and sent those on to uh to epa with 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 some other little caveats to that as well but i won't get into that now it was three days of hearings <laughs> thank you mr chairman Thank you. Uh, thank you, Doug. Uh, next up is E-470 Authority, and I believe uh, Director Dyack is going to give this report. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. Um, uh, of note, we uh, approved the 2023 budget at E-470. Uh, we voted to uh, hold or freeze toll rates for the 2023 year, with the caveat to come back in the first half of the year to revisit to see if we can uh, make any downward adjustments. Uh, we also uh, approved a contract amendment for our central maintenance facility. Our central maintenance facility is moving um, from where it currently is on the uh, east side of uh, E-470, right in front of uh, Aurora Highlands, to a more centralized area right next to our administrative services facility. Mr. Chair, that is all. Thank you. Thank you, John. Uh, Director Dyack, much appreciated. Uh, next up is a report from CDOT, although there is no one here from CDOT. I assume that means there is no report. And uh, maybe Director White uh, has been cross-trained on snow plows and is going through the town of Bennett right now on I-70. Let's hope so. Uh, <laughs> next up is a report from RTD. Uh, and uh, Director Welch could not attend, but he did email to me and to Doug uh, an update that I would I will read for him. <clears throat> the Northwest Rail Peak Service Study continues to progress with extensive ongoing engagement between RTD and corridor stakeholders, some of whom I see here. Uh, the judge in the Denver Transit Partners LLC versus RTD case intends to issue a final order by the end of the year. Yikes. Uh, third, RTD has completed the first set of sub-regional service council meetings, which included a discussion of service planning basics and the new call for projects partnership program. The uh, next, the zero fare for better air report has been submitted to the Colorado Energy Office. Uh, Brian did not forward that to, to us, so I don't know what that says. Uh, presumably we will be able to see it by the next meeting. Uh, next, sales tax through October, 2022 is 14% higher compared to 2021. And ridership through October, 2022 is 29% higher compared to 2021. And that is the report from RTD. I am ill prepared to uh, take questions on Brian's behalf. Uh, but if uh, uh, if you do have questions, please feel free to uh, email Brian. I'm sure he'll be able to answer them. Uh, next up is uh, administrative items. Next meeting, January 18th, 2023. Uh, we had a preview of what uh, will be on the agenda. And I hope you can all be there. That will be an in-person meeting, and uh, we'll uh, continue our discussion on the uh, on the housing uh, uh, initiative. Uh, do we have other matters by members? If so, please raise your hand. I see none. So, uh, having said that, I believe we are finished and we can adjourn almost almost on schedule. Thank you, everybody, for being here. 
please have happy holidays. Stay warm, and please, uh, please try to take care of uh, any emergencies in your jurisdictions. Uh, please be mindful of that, and let's get people off the streets and into shelter. Thank you very much. Uh, with Thank that, uh, we. With that, we are adjourned. Thank you, Director Levy. Thank, Thank you. you. Happy holidays. holidays. Happy, Happy holidays. holidays. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye, you all. Happy holidays. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So.